there's a template here which is called Easy Max Batch with scale up scenarios, and I'm going to use that to look at the first project for today, which is optimizing a chemical reaction and then looking towards scaling it up. And then when I finish that, I'm going to look at crystallization, and then I'm going to look at heat transfer, and then I'm going to look at mixing. When you find the uh, tool you're looking for and you click on it in this website, a little preview picture appears to tell you what the tool contains. And the way to understand that is a rectangle represents the main contents inside the reactor. And then there'll be some other elements on the picture, like uh, heat transfer. The little coil icon represents that we're either heating or cooling the reactor. And then there'll also be, in, in a reaction example, some uh, chemical information summarizing what's meant to be happening chemically in the process. So this gives a quick idea, this picture gives a quick idea about the capability of the template. Um, and you can see that if I click on the one underneath it, you'll see it's a little bit different. It's got an extra element, which is a feed tank and addition from the feed tank to the main reactor. So that's what we call a fed batch or a semi-batch template. And uh, you know you would just make the appropriate choice depending on what way you want it to, what kind of problem you want it to model. Also, you'll find in here um, knowledge base articles connected with these templates, so articles that describe how to use the template, and uh, you'll also quite often find recorded webinars, like today's webinar, which help you to, again, get some more detail about how to work with the tool. Uh, so here there's a number of different rows, each one corresponding to either a prediction or an experiment, and uh, I'm highlighting rows 8 and 9 because those are two actual experiments with the chemistry. So in those experiments, the initial values um, are given in these columns C to F. So we had 100 milliliters of solution, which comprised 82 grams of solvent, 6 grams of substrate, and 12 grams of reagent. So that was our reaction mixture. And the only difference between those two experiments was the temperature. So one experiment was at 20 degrees, and one was at 40. So we're just tabulating here the conditions for those experiments. And then later, we'll be able to tabulate a so-called optimized set of conditions. And then later again, we'll be able to tabulate a scale-up prediction, where we just multiply up all of the amounts and then say, OK, if we're going to run that in the plant, how's it going to go? And that's really the key to right first time scale up is being able to see in advance, preferably well in advance, what's going to happen in the plant. And then if you don't like how that looks, take some decisions to change the process or change your choice of equipment or the operating conditions so that it will work in a good way. And that's really what this model allows us to do, specifically for answering a question, what's the best way to run the process? So you can choose your objective, your goal. And um, to keep it simple and quick for today, I'm just going to choose a simple goal, which is to maximize yield. I want to make really as much product as possible and as little impurity as possible. And um, I'm going to look at three factors as things that I can change in the real world that can affect yield. A uh, typical chemistry variable to look at would be temperature. I'm also going to look at the number of equivalents of reagent. Um, via the number of grams of reagent, and I'm also going to look at the end time. So how long I leave the reaction running before I quench it. So I'm going to again press the play button, the same kind of control as in the other environments, and let Dynacam run. And what happens now is a curve appears on which the black uh, response is the thing I'm trying to maximize, yield in this case. So the black curve basically continually rises as Dynachem finds better and better and better ways to run the chemistry. Uh, it started with a yield of about 70%, and it's climbed and climbed and climbed until eventually getting to around about 87%. And while it's been, and, and the way it's managed to climb in that way is because the blue response or the blue curve there is the end time, so how long we run the reaction for. And you can read the values from the right-hand y-axis. Um, so it started with a reaction end time of five hours, but it then decided, no, it should be as short as possible. 
so it brought the end time right down to two and a half hours and then the the red response is the temperature and you can see that it pushed the temperature up and that makes sense in a way because if we want to have a shorter time we may need to have a higher temperature so uh, those two maybe go together in a way and then finally the amount of reagent if I just navigate down to smaller numbers you can see what happened to the amount of reagent Dynachem eventually decided that the amount of reagent should be a lot less than we're currently using so um, you know we obviously have a, a large number of chemical equivalents of reagent and we just don't need that much in order to to get this optimal result with those chemical rate constants and optimized conditions that I found from the lab and I'm going to now simulate how this would run in the plant um, so again you press the play button this time we've got no data points because we haven't actually run the reaction in the plant yet we're trying to do all this before we go to the plant to make sure that the scale up will be right first time and um, the blue curve again there is the substrate disappearing we can see that happens the light blue is the reagent disappearing we can see that happening too I'm just going to focus on the responses that are most interesting for us in terms of scale up and very often it will be the temperature um, so we we found that the optimum temperature was about 70 degrees and we're now interested in seeing you know how achievable is that um, under chemically reacting conditions in our large scale vessel and we find that when we press the play button and simulate this case the temperature initially increases a few degrees to maybe 72 73 degrees that probably is not a major problem for us but uh, that's certainly what's predicted and then eventually it settles back down to 70 degrees as the reaction runs to completion but more interesting and maybe more problematic for us is the fact that in order to keep the temperature at that 70 degree or so set point the jacket temperature has to respond really quickly roughly in about six or seven minutes and drop all the way down to about 15 degrees C which is asking a lot of our control system um, and our jacket cooling system to be able to do that so what we can see here is that depending again on the particular plant configuration we've got in mind these conditions may or may not be achievable in practice um, so the kind of things we can look at then is we can just use this little settings icon in simulator to bring up a list of our parameters really for this scenario and one of the key parameters is the heat transfer coefficient um, again I'm going to show you how to get that in a minute but um, let's say we had an alternative reactor with much better heat transfer so we just can type in here the characteristics of that alternative reactor and we can use a little feature in simulator called ghost lines to have Dynacam remember this initial result whilst showing us the new result so when I rerun the dashed lines are the previous case that I was looking at and the, the solid lines are now the new case with this better heat transfer performance um, so here we can see how the UA of our vessel has a really significant impact on the controllability of this reaction 